Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm your host, Isaac Porter from Lowry Porter Ophthalmology, and this is your update in ophthalmology and eye care. We're coming to this episode in high definition, and I want to say a big thank you to Mike Esser and Alex Ferguson for all the great tips that we've got from them over the past month on video. Today I want to talk about the difference between LASIK and PRK which are two of the most commonly performed laser vision correction procedures. LASIK, you've probably heard about more commonly, involves creating a partial thickness flap in the cornea and then using a laser to change the shape of the remaining cornea to include the power from glasses or contacts onto the eye. After that, the flap is put back down. The vision usually gets better over the next day, but can continue to heal and improve over the first three or six months. PRK is a safer procedure than LASIK because it doesn't involve creating a flap. With a flap, you could have complications with a flap or infection or inflammation underneath the flap. Instead, with PRK, the cells are removed from the surface of the cornea and the laser treatment is placed directly onto the surface. Usually over the first week, those cells heal and fill back over the surface. They're like our skin, they're always changing over. But because of this, PRK is a less convenient procedure than LASIK because afterwards there is pain and some people can have quite a bit of pain for two or three days. It also takes longer for the vision to come back while the surface is healing. So some days can be good, other days more blurry, but over time it levels out, eventually getting to the same result as LASIK, but it takes longer to get there. PRK or LASIK may be more appropriate for different patients as some patients may not qualify for LASIK. When we raise the flap in the cornea, only the back remaining layers provide strength for the eye moving forward. Because of this, if a patient's cornea is too thin, we are worried that these back layers will not provide enough support to keep the eye and the prescription stable later on in their life. Because of that, these patients may not qualify for LASIK and may need to have PRK. Also, some patients that have clouding of the front part of the cornea or suffer from recurrent erosions, which can be painful on the cornea, these problems may be treated at the same time as PRK and may prevent patients from suffering from these type of problems. Because of this, some people may not have a choice over which procedure would be the best, but other patients can think about their visual needs and may be able to choose one or the other. There are two other procedures similar to PRK called EpiLASIK and LASIK, L-A-S-E-K, but I will be able to discuss those further on a different episode of A State of Sight. Until next time, if you have any questions over LASIK or PRK, please post on our Facebook, and we'll be happy to interact with you there. Until then, good health and good sight.